According to IRS records, White made $10 million in his best year with assets estimated at $22 million. He lives in a plush lakefront mansion, while some of his former patients say they suffer. I live in constant pain. A dozen of his former patients gathered in a TV studio at our affiliate, Fox 6 in Milwaukee. Thank you all for coming here today. Crime Watch Daily is doing an investigation into Dr. Cully White and the allegations against him and his practice. It's horrible. It, it's horrible to explain the pain because nobody understands except for us. <laughs> they lifted their shirts and showed us their scars, covering a mangled mess inside. I wake up every morning in extreme pain. They brought medical records and x-rays. Is this you? That's me. But most of all, they wanted to share the hell they say they've been put through, including the frightening news some received from Aurora Medical Center, alerting them they might have counterfeit medical parts surgically implanted. My pain is every day. It's constant from my head, honestly, down to my toes. These 12 are part of a much larger group of patients who started a Facebook page with more than, are you ready, 500 patients complaining about Dr. White. Debbie Shalek is one of them. I have a metal plate with eight screws, but I'll never be the same. So he took away my future. Lori Moore went in for brain surgery in 2013. Can you tell me why did you go to see Dr. White in the first place? I dealt with um, very severe facial pain for a few years, but I was so desperate to get rid of this pain. Um, I scheduled the surgery, and when I woke up from the surgery, I ended up having complete facial numbness on my right side from chin to forehead. Lori brought us her x-ray. What are we looking at? You're looking at the implant device in the skull, and then the bottom circle, the smaller circle, is a screw that came out from the, that implant. This and is the loose screw that's in your head? Correct. And correct. it's just floating? It's just in Can you flesh. feel it? Yes, it's very sensitive, and I feel a lump back here. Allegations of loose screws and claims of botched surgeries we heard a ton of complaints. Neurosurgeons reportedly have the highest rate of medical malpractice lawsuits. A search of court records reveals Dr. White has been sued for malpractice at least nine times since 2004. One case alone reportedly settled for $3 million. He messed up my back with the way he did my surgery. Rachel Jones, who has two small children still in diapers, says she struggles to walk, claiming her legs buckle every few steps. I do have permanent nerve damage on that right side due to the nerves being nicked or cut during surgery. What these patients did not know was that at the time of some of their surgeries, Dr. White's competency was under investigation by Wisconsin's Medical Examining Board because of a complaint, White operated on the wrong side of someone's back, a charge he denied. And it was all greed. All he was looking for was a paycheck. He didn't care about the rest that. of us in our lives. Crime Watch Daily has uncovered other shocking revelations. In this disciplinary report, the medical board determined in part, Dr. White, quote, had difficulty processing information. And while the board found Dr. White demonstrated good knowledge of surgical technique, the board had concerns about his foundational knowledge of neurosurgical spine conditions. The report went on to say his clinical judgment ranged from good to poor. It even questioned his decision making. Worst of all, the medical examining board concluded his unprofessional conduct tended to constitute a danger to the health welfare, and safety of his patients. None of us deserved this. All we wanted was help. Robin Rockwell and Lori Moore were both operated on by Dr. White while all of this was going on. And they say they had no idea the doctor was under investigation. What we found out next cuts like a knife. Just months before he took a scalpel to Robin's back, Dr. White was indicted by a federal grand jury on 13 counts of medical health care fraud involving fake insurance claims. These are people that are supposed to be caring for us, not stabbing us in the back. The timing of Robin's surgery is downright scary when you see what else we uncovered. Robin had her surgery on November 4th, and just two weeks later on the 20th, 
Dr. White agrees to surrender his license. He stops practicing medicine altogether on December 17th. Robin says she would have never let Dr. White touch her if she knew the kind of trouble he was in. He's despicable. Five months after Robin's surgery, while she was still recuperating, the disgraced doctor pleads guilty to one count of health care fraud. He is sentenced to six months in prison, followed by six months of house arrest at his $3 million mansion on the water. So this is Pewaukee Lake. It's about a half hour away from Milwaukee. And this is where Dr. Cully White lives. It's quite luxurious here, multi-million dollar homes. We tried to find Dr. White to get his side of what happened, but we never saw him leave his home. In order to capture the grandeur of his mansion on the lake, we had to get a boat just to see it. He's living the cush life while all of us are suffering. At his sentencing, court records show White told the judge that he was sorry, embarrassed, and made a horrible mistake, and just wanted to, quote, improve the quality of my patients' lives. I will say it, he ruined my life. We repeatedly asked Dr. White and several of his attorneys to sit down for an interview. One attorney did call us back to remind us Dr. White was dropped from the larger lawsuit involving fake medical parts and had no further comment. But in court documents, Dr. White repeatedly denies ever knowingly using counterfeit implantable hardware on any of his patients. Despite his denial, those patients say they want Dr. White to feel their pain. Oh, it's not very fair at all. I think somehow someone should give him back surgery and see how he likes that living in pain for the rest of his life. But this story of allegedly profiting off pain doesn't end here. These former patients are still in pain, and those who fear they may have fake medical parts still in their bodies face a terrible decision. Taking out the hardware and seeing if it's counterfeit is really the only way I would know that you could definitively see if it's a fake hardware or not. Dr. Charles Rosen is a spinal surgeon and a professor at UC Irvine Medical Center. He fears they can't even rely on their medical records being accurate. It's definitely a red flag for a patient if in the surgical record it doesn't record what the implants were that were put in the body. They, they have to be. I got a box of like 350 pages. And what I really wanted to see is the log to see if I had, you know, the fake parts. I went through that several times. That wasn't even in there. And after all they say they've been through, who wants to be cut open again? I don't want to have to go through this. It's, it's terrifying. What do you think you'll do? Do you think you will have the surgery or what do you think? I you'll... might have to, I, you know. <laughs> I, I can't take the pain, you know, it's, it's, it's so bad at times. It's just so hard and just to think that I'm going to have to go through that again. I don't know how I'm going to be able to deal with this.